in section 3.1, we said that a homogeneous second order homogeneous differential equation was something that looked like this, some function of t times the second derivative of y plus another function of t times the first derivative of y plus a third function of t times y equals g of t. And for homogeneous equations specifically, we said that g of t equals 0. So I could actually erase g of t here and say that this equals 0. This is what we called a homogeneous differential equation. Second order linear differential equation. Back in chapter 2, this was in unit 1, we also looked at, let me move that down just a little bit farther, we also looked at homogeneous first order linear differential equations. And we said that in that case, uh, an equation of this form, dy dx or y prime, equals some function containing both x and y. If that function on the right hand side can be expressed as a function of the ratio y over x, then we call it a, a homogeneous equation. The difference is uh, between these two is that this is a specific definition to first order linear differential equations. And I did not, uh, I didn't emphasize it at the time because I knew it would be confusing. First order differential equations have their own definition for what it means to be homogeneous. Um, I don't want to get into that too much now, but I, I want to point it out because it can be confusing if you start looking for the word homogeneous in the index of your textbook, or if you look it up online, which definition you get will depend on the order of the differential equation. First order equations have their own definition. Second order equations and higher have a different definition. And this is the one we're going to go with. Um, the definition of a homogeneous linear differential equation for third order equations and higher is that that linear operator that we described, your textbook uses square brackets there. I'm not really sure I understand why they do that, but they do. We're operating on y here, we're going to get, remember we started with a capital P of t and then a y to the nth power. Uh, and I think I called that P naught. Um, we could do that or we could just start out by assuming that we're going to divide everything through by p of t anyway so we're going to get that sort of more simplified version of this equation where the leading coefficient is one so i get y the nth derivative of y plus some function of t times the n min oops times y the n minus one or the n minus first derivative of y plus p sub 2, and so on, down to p sub n minus 1, the n minus 1th p of t function, times the first derivative of y, that's a prime, not a 1, plus the nth function of t times y. And that that equals 0. Uh, I could erase my, I'm going to erase my g of t equals 0 here now because it's a little bit redundant since I changed it. Um, some function, in fact, I should rewrite this one too. I could call this, if I divide everything through here by P of T, then I get a leading coefficient of one. I'm going to say that Q divided by P is just P of T. And R divided by P is, uh, we'll call that Q of T. But notice those are lowercase letters. So this is the different. This is the definition of a linear, of a homogeneous linear differential equation if it's a second order, and this is the definition of a homogeneous diff linear differential equation if it's of any order uh, higher than one. Here's the first order definition. So n can be two, which means I can now absorb this definition into this one. And so this is our general definition for what it means to be a homogeneous nth order linear differential equation. All right, and I've moved things around a little bit here so that we can make some more sense of this. Um, so now that we know what the 
what, what an nth order linear differential equation looks like and what it means to be a homogeneous nth order linear differential equation, we could talk about what the solutions to a homogeneous differential equation look like for any for any order, right? For for second order, third order, sixteenth order. And that is in the same way as a solution in the second order case looked like y equals c1 y1 oops y1 plus c2 y2 we knew we would have two oops two separate solutions because it's a second order equation we were going to have two solutions and the general solution is a linear combination of those two solutions and of course if this is not zero then we have to find a particular solution as well and tack that on at the end but but for the homogeneous case right where the right hand side is zero the general solution to a homogeneous second order linear differential equation looks like this the solution to an nth order equation looks like this y equals c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus c3 y3 plus c4 y4 you get the idea plus cn minus 1 y n minus 1 minus 1 plus c n y n and of course typical for me i've run out of room um we don't usually write this second to the last term it's understood that if you go up or down i guess you count down from n the next number down is going to be n minus 1 so in fact i think what i'll do is erase this and put it's got the wrong thing there put the put the uh the c n c n y n in there so the same thing really it's the same thing right we have a second order here so we have two solutions and we have a linear combination of those two solutions gives us the general solution here we have an nth order so we're going to have n solutions we have y1 y2 y3 y4 all the way up to yn and y the general solution is a linear combination of those absolutely the same thing once again i can absorb this uh, this case into the general case now if i have some initial conditions we usually call those i'll say initial conditions we usually call those y of t naught equals y naught another way to write that would be the ordered pair t naught comma y naught in other words if i plug in t naught what gets spits out is y naught right this is how we usually write that but, but this is another way to think of it if we have initial conditions and i can find c1 c2 cn i can find values of these constants so that this linear combination satisfies those linear sorry satisfies those initial conditions if that's the case then i'll be able to say that every solution to this equation will be writable as a linear combination of y1 y2 and so on so to do that um, i'm going to have for example um let's see i'll have c1 y1 what where y1 is y1 of t naught right in other words i'm going to I have a solution y1, I'm going to plug t naught into it. And then I have another c2 y2 of t naught. I have a second solution here, y2. This is just coming from, from here, but I'm plugging t naught into it. And I'm going to keep doing that up to cn yn of t naught. And that has to equal y naught because I have these initial conditions. Whenever I plug T naught into my solution, uh, this goes way back. This solution comes about because each one of these is a solution, but this linear combination is itself a solution. And we call this the general solution to the homogeneous case. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking the general solution and I'm trying to satisfy these initial conditions with it. I'm plugging T naught into each individual solution, making a linear combination of those, then the result has to be the, the output here, this y naught value, okay? Well, that's true for this version of the problem. Then it also has to be true for 
the first derivative and the second derivative and the third derivative and so on. All right, there's my first derivative case and my second derivative case. And I'm going to carry on doing this all the way up to the n minus 1 derivative. Now, you might be excused for wondering why I stopped at the n minus 1th derivative. Clearly, I'm working with an nth order differential equation. I have a linear combination of n different solutions. So why did I stop at the n minus 1st derivative here? Well, in order to find these n values here, these n constants, um, I have n unknowns and I need n equations. So this is a system of equations with n unknowns. And so I need n equations and I'm starting with the zeroth derivative. So I need to end, if I count from zero, uh, if I count from one starting at the zeroth derivative, I'll end up at n with the n minus first derivative. So that's why I stopped where I did. Now this is not a class in linear algebra, so I'm not going to belabor this point very much, but it turns out that I can find these constants, C1 through Cn, as long as the determinant of coefficient matrix is not zero. But what is the coefficient matrix here? If I'm looking for, if my unknowns are C1, C2, Cn, and so on, then my coefficients are y1, sorry, y1, y2, up to yn, and then y1 prime, y2 prime, up to yn prime. And again, I'm going to do that all the way down to y1, the n minus first derivative, y2, the n minus first derivative, all the way over to y sub n, the n minus first derivative. That is the coefficient matrix of this system of equations. Well, if I highlight just the first two, the first two equations and the first two coefficients, you might recognize that as the Ronskian. And in fact, all this is here is the, the Ronskian of the general nth order case, whereas this little two by two matrix or the determinant here is the Ronskian of a second order differential equation. So what I've got here is the Ronskian of an nth order differential equation. And I need for that to be not equal to zero. In the same way and for the same reasons as we wanted the, the Ronskian in the second order case to be not equal to zero. And when I say it, we want it to be not equal to zero, I mean we want it to be not equal to zero specifically at t naught, right? When I plug t naught in. And in fact, it, t naught can be any point in the interval in which there are solutions. So it, basically, we want the Ronskian to be non zero at every point in the interval. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to belabor this here, but it turns out that, that the Ronskian, wrong pen, the Ronskian is either going to be equal to, to zero for every possible t naught value in whatever interval I'm working on, the intervals where there are solutions to this thing. It's either going to be zero everywhere in that interval or nowhere in that interval. And so as long as I have one place in my interval, one t naught value in my interval for which the Ronskian is not equal to zero, then it's going to be true for all of the, uh, the, the t values in that interval. And that means that I guaranteed to be able to express the, uh, the solution, every solution of this differential equation as a linear combination of these solutions. Now that, that's ex exactly what we had in the second order case. And again, as in the second order case, we call that set of solutions, let me write them down here, the set containing the solutions y1, y2, and so on, up to y sub n. We call that set of solutions a fundamental set of solutions. And we call this version, this general form here, well, we call it the general solution, right? So this is really just an extension of second order linear differential equations. All the stuff that we learned in second order uh, linear differential equations, all the stuff we learned in chapter three applies here again with more terms, 
really essentially is all we're saying. There's more to this Ronskian. There's more to this system of equations. There's, there are more terms in this general solution. Um, but apart from that, the, the stuff we learned, the ideas we learned in the, in the case of the second order differential equation, the homogeneous equation, everything else applies just as it did before. And that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, we're going to talk next about linear dependence and independence. And that, again, that will be familiar if you've had some linear algebra. Um, this is not a course in linear algebra. I keep, I keep saying that because it's important to realize that while some of you may have had some exposure to some of these ideas, uh, that course is not a prerequisite for this one at this institution. And so anything that you need to know from linear algebra, I will be, I will be teaching you. You will be exposed to in the context of the course. Uh, if you had had to have linear algebra before, if it was a prerequisite, then I would just carry on uh, uh, with the assumptions that you had seen uh, determinants and you knew about linear dependence and independence and whatnot, um, but I'm not making those assumptions because I know some of you have not had that class. So that's it for this video and our next video will be about linear dependence and independence.